I'm Dr. Brett Osborne, board certified neurosurgeon, nutrition specialist, and featured BPI sports expert. Last time you and I spoke, we talked about ketogenic diets. We talked about a traditional ketogenic diet and a modified ketogenic right. diet, which kind of led into some different side conversations, mm -hmm. which once I watched the whole thing, I realized there were so many more things I wanted to right. talk about. Whitney and I were having conversations about it because, I mean, Whitney's probably dieted uh, for photo shoots, bodybuilding competitions, just as much as I have. So I want to bring him up because I think there's two ways we can look at this. We can look at it from more medical perspective, sure. and then there's a real world perspective of losing body fat, sure. right? Just doing it over and over and knowing how to do it. Yep. Like at this point, if you knew you had 10 plus weeks to get in shape, you knew you, you know you could do it. One, Tim, I'll like be in shape. Zero, in, zero I'll be in shape in eight down. weeks. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's the same thing for me. So there's one thing between knowing how to do it, and then there's another of exploring like what is potentially the best way to do it, and also what maybe best in the long term. Like when we talk about the health benefits sure. as well. Sure. So, but the main thing that I want to dive into first, because I have some pet peeves about it, I still feel that there's so much bullshit out there when it comes to ketogenic diets. There's so much bad information. People will take a little bit of truth and then it gets morphed and it changes into this weird thing. And so people are out there and they have these weird ideas of what a ketogenic diet is or what the benefit of being in ketosis is. So there's some things that I can't even find. If I go on Google or if I go on PubMed, I can't even find information. So one of the things I want to do is pick your brain. I think that's a lot of what we want to do is just pick your brain. Okay. And this is like the quest for the perfect diet. Mm -hmm. So uh, because we've talked about before, you know, knowing guys like Whitney and I still like going in the gym, still like making sure that, you know, we're able to build lean muscle or preserve lean muscle and get lean at the same time. Sure. But now at a point in our life where we also want to look at long term health as well. So we talked about comparing a low carb diet where you're in a low insulin state. So your body is, is efficiently utilizing fat as a source of fuel, but you're not in ketosis right. versus being in ketosis. So your body is still in this fat burning state, but your body is now producing ketones. So isolating separately from fat loss, just the benefits of ketones we talked about the benefit of it fueling your brain, that being the primary benefit of ketones. Right, so uh, there's data on the, what are called the neuroprotective effects of ketones. So we more than believe there's data, again, it's early, um, that shows that the, um, the progression, the onset of these diseases like Alzheimer's, um, there are some others with esoteric names, um, is, is slowed. Um, by virtue of you know the ketone body's presence, okay, uh, in your in your bloodstream and in your interstitium. So there's there's health benefits. There are health benefits, but, but specific <clears throat> specific to like weight loss because I think that's what most people are concerned about when they're doing a ketogenic diet. Is, right, and the thing about it is that okay, ketones are just a marker then. Right. In other words, to know you're in ketosis. That's, that's it. it. They don't have that's anything it. to do with your fat loss. They are right. a marker that you are in a very very accelerated. Uh, fat burning state. Right. How much ketones or the quantity mm -hmm. of ketones that you are producing is an indicator of how fast you are burning fat. That said, being in nutritional ketosis is just a is just a marker that you that you are mobilizing fat in a very very aggressive manner. More so than what James was alluding to, than an individual who is on say a modified ketogenic diet, which he calls a low carbohydrate diet. I sort of just call it a modified ketogenic diet in which you're not necessarily gonna be, you're not gonna be purple on that strip, on that urine stick, right? You're not gonna be three millimolars in, you may be 0.5. So you may just be making right on that edge, which is where I like my patients. Why? Because one of the problems with uh, ketosis, and this is not per the books, this is better than per the books, this is what I've seen and what I know to be true, okay, knowing a lot of people who've been on ketogenic diets, et cetera, et cetera, is that when you are on these ketogenic diets, again, despite what people say, I can tell you what reality is, you tend to dump muscle, okay, you just do. Even though there's this muscle sparing effect of ketones that you all, and that's, you know, that's everyone's big right, argument we've all, when you we've get all read about it. We've all read about it. We've all read about it. We've all read about it. The bottom line is that that's not wholly true. If you go and you look at somebody who's been on a, an aggressive ketogenic diet, 
They lost a lot of muscle. You can see the difference. They're going to lose muscle. You guys have seen it. Absolutely. We see it all the time. Experience it. Of course. You you you, you just will. You just will. Even if you're using exogenous ketones and you're trying to play all these games and, oh, yeah, this is going to have branch chains, et cetera, et cetera, you're you're still going to sacrifice some muscle. I promise you. I've seen it all the time. Hence, and by virtue of the fact that people are less energetic when they're on a full ketogenic diet, and some of them tend to be miserable, some of them. Um, we use a modified ketogenic diet here. Why? Because in my practice, I never want anybody to lose muscle. I want them to put on muscle. And I'm going to tell you, putting on muscle in ketosis, it's not happening. Okay? It, 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 it's not happening. The only way it's happening, the only way it's happening is if at the same time you're using androgens. Okay? And but, not, I, but for the people who aren't. For the people who aren't. Which a lot to, of people aren't. Right? Okay? For the people who aren't. It's just not going to happen. You may, may maintain your muscle mass, may, all right? But in all likelihood, you're going to end up shedding muscle in that very, very catabolic state. Okay? Well, I mean, you in, just in, in, order, in order to be in ketosis, you, your body technically is in a starved state. Correct. That's correct. But again, what's going on in the literature now is that there is this muscle preserving, muscle sparing effect of the ketone body. All right? Yeah, but, 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 but to what degree? Right, and that's there could be a small degree, and that, and that, but does that offset right. the amount of muscle loss through gluconeogenesis? Right, this is the answer to that is not in my opinion because I will tell you that performance tends to falter, okay, a bit when you're ketotic, not to the extent that, oh my God, you know, you're going to, uh, you know, if you deadlift 500 pounds, you're going to go down, you'll only be able to deadlift 225 pounds, and again, that has to do with rep schemes. We talked about that before, but hang on. Um, it's not going to be that drastic, but you're going to lose, by virtue of the fact that you've lost some muscle, um, you're going to lose some, some strength. And again, that has to do with rep schemes and whether right. or not you're doing, um, you know... But uh, strength, strength is different than muscle size, lean muscle mass. It is, and it's also different than power. Right. We talked about this, you know, the, the phosphocreatine moves, the one and two reps, you know, on a, on a deadlift are different than... Yeah, so you can be strong on a ketogenic diet. Correct. For and a couple you, reps. And, and, and you absolutely can. It's a different energy system. But if you're talking about having the ability, as an example, to, if you're working glycolytic, okay, like you guys are, you know, we're bodybuilders, okay, um, you're working like in the glycolytic range, right? You are in all likelihood, all right, and I would bet you a hand as a surgeon, okay, um, you're going to suffer. In other words, if you can do, say, eight to ten reps, I'm just making it up, yes. on a chest press or a dumbbell press or whatever it is. If you think that being on a ketogenic diet, absent glycogen, uh, you know, big glycogen stores in your muscle, you're going to be able to your per, do it. Your performance you is going to suffer. You will not. You will not be able to do it. You so, just won't. And I think, yep. so then you have to modify your training. So for a power lifter who trains in, you know, the rep scheme of two, three, four, mm-hmm. five reps, it's not going to affect them at all. Right. But if you're training 10, 12, or even 15 reps, I mean, there's times where I like to train in the 20 rep scheme. Yep. Doing a ketogenic diet, that's not going to work for me. You're going to suffer. So, you know, okay, so here's... Here's, this goes back to this pet peeve because again, you read the, the, the comments, get on Reddit, wherever you want to get, and you say, okay, but being in a ketogenic diet, being in ketosis has this muscle sparing effect. Mm-hmm. Maybe on paper that looks good, yep. but that's why I wanted to bring Whitney up here because guys like us who have done it, fine tuned it, notice the difference between this diet versus this diet versus this diet. I can see a dramatic difference. I've tried it. I've tried doing a keto diet and I saw the amount of muscle, lean muscle that I lost. So if someone wants to say, okay, but there's a muscle sparing benefit over here, I would say, what's your ultimate goal? Because if it's just fat loss, I would say maintaining lean muscle as your metabolic engine, your ability to burn calories. We do that here. Right, is more important. It is, and it's also, that's why we do it. I don't want people to, I always tell them, I don't want, sitting right at this table, I don't want you ever to sacrifice your engine. Right. Don't sacrifice the engine. In addition to the fact that when you lose muscle, and you can say the same thing, maybe the ketones do have this longevity effect. When you lose muscle, in the book, okay, my book, there is a study that I quote from the British Medical Journal, 2008. It's a huge study cohort. There's 7,000 plus men, all right? Um, And it shows definitively that longevity, um, or really mortality, all cause, including cancer. So all cause mortality, including cancer, and independent of cardiovascular fitness, is directly associated with your strength. Don't sacrifice strength. Don't sacrifice muscle mass. 
don't.